Boy, oh boy. I think the competition is getting a little bit tighter now as we're getting closer to the local elections. The beef between Musi Maimani, John Steen Hazen, and uh, Herman Mashaba in the mix. You might, you might have seen an article by uh, the DA leader, John Steen Hazen, where he was saying that he is willing to work with um, the current president, Sarah Ramaphosa, should the ANC um, get uh, below 50% of the votes. He's working. He's willing to do a coalition with them, says um, John Steen Hazen. And um, Musi Maimani, uh, leader now of a movement, uh, uh, OSA, right? One South Africa movement came in and said, uh, while John Steen Hazen was uh, doing that interview with the Sunday uh, news publisher, he mentioned uh, uh, Musi's name. Uh, that is uh, John Stein Hazen. So he said, I wasn't going to say anything. And then he started dropping some pointers on um, Twitter. One of the um, uh, comments which uh, a whole lot of people started to interrogate was the issue about um, Musi Maimani saying that... Um, when he would go to maybe the university he wouldn't be saying that um the politics in south africa are not racially based you know um just basically insinuating that um helen zele and um john stein hazen were against uh venturing into garnering uh the the black votes vote uh all the time see and then he started giving an example about uh joe biden in the states who is now having um uh what's this uh, social justice uh warrior word oh yes diversity in terms of um the cabinet representation and so forth and he says that this how south africa should look like you know in the uh, da and that when uh black folks look at the democratic alliance makeup the all they see it's uh uh white folks and uh the majority being uh white and male so he said that he was fighting against that but uh, you can see that was a, a a losing battle because if the leader of a political party says that have been impeded in um, making new policies and making rules and just basically uh, being in charge i mean then he wasn't worth being a, a political leader because if you're a political head you must make such decision and when you out and you resign you leave the political party you cannot complain about it and say that they have stopped me you are a leader you know so as a result, most people are saying, oh, look, maybe you were a token, but most people were saying that you were because now you are even telling us that you're not allowed to be able to, to express yourself and take charge, <clears throat> you see? So, but if you go out there and uh, do a survey and just ask people as to whether they would like to see a certain political party having diversity or them having jobs uh, can tell you right now that the first thing that they tell you that that i'd rather have a job first than uh looking into diversity but then again you have gwen Gwenya. i think i'm saying the name and saying name right she's in charge of the policy direction of the da and um, strictly if you look at um the da policy it's um they talk about non-racialism and they are not for racial identity uh, uh, policies, if you look at it. So I'm sure most of my money knew about it when he joined the DA. And um, I guess that's what, what was one of the reasons why the DA was uh, caught 
in the middle of the road really and been uh, risking uh, to be run over by motor vehicles because all they had they had uh, they had no position they were dilly dallying when it comes to the black economic empowerment they didn't have an actual policy with regard to to that and they also wanted to uh placate the other side of their voters by saying no we're not into racial uh quotas we are all about uh merit right and um obviously musima imani exacerbated that because he's a liberal progressive lefty politician who happened to join the D the da which is a uh, merit-based uh, political party as they they say they are and here he is out and then one thing we hear of um Herman Mashaba now saying that he's going to pursue uh, legal options against uh, um John Stian Hayes and and this also stems from the very same interview that uh, John Stian Hayes was giving to the Sunday papers <clears throat> all right the Sunday news publishers saying that um, um, if an individual, I'm just paraphrasing, if an individual is um, given a little bit scrap of uh, meaty substance to uh, the crocodile and thinking that the crocodile will be satisfied, it's, it's not going to end there. The crocodile will eventually eat um, the person who feeds uh, a little meaty a scrap of food so in this case John Stian Hazen was um, talking about the EFF uh, basically criticizing uh, uh, Herman Mashaba saying that uh, he was basically uh, beholden to the EFF and uh, trying to placate them with whatever that uh, Herman was uh, trying to do and I suppose it will be issues along the line of making uh, folks in the um, uh, security uh, industry uh, being permanent and, uh, you know, around uh, Gauteng, <clears throat> where Herman was the mayor. And um, so Mr. Stienhaisen, I suppose, he didn't like that. He criticized uh, uh, Herman Mashaba for working with the, the EFF. He didn't like it. And here he is now saying that I am going to work with the African National Congress only if their president would still be Cyril Ramaphosa and says, I'm not going to be working with um, the... If Didi Mabuza is the president of the ANC, I'm not going to be working with them. And uh, I don't know whether this is naivety or what else, because any figurehead that comes up to the ANC uh, steers the ANC Titanic ship, okay? And uh, the ANC, NECs, their branches, the whole movement. They have the same programs, basically. It's continuity of, of government with them. It doesn't matter who's at the helm. So, and then most people now are pointing that out and say, oh, you know, when it come, then it goes back to the racial uh, identity politics. And now folks are saying, oh, look, uh, maybe uh, Stian Hayes and, and his uh, elk, as they say, should just when the next uh, ANC conference come through, should just put their, maybe this time at 2 billion in order to help pocket, uh, to, to help put those amount in the pocket of the uh, conference attendees uh, to purchase the vote on behalf of Cyril Ramaphosa again. And um, the racial uh, politic crew now are saying, aha, look at it. We told you that um, Cyril is with uh, the so-called white monopoly capital. And, uh, oh, look at how John Stienhaisen, who's a, a male 
Caucasian. Oh, is loving um, the presidency of Osro Ramaphosa, and there's not even a need for the DA to contest elections and win. So the stereotypes keep continuing being uh, perpetuated. So we'll see as this one goes out. Uh, and then it's so unfortunate, which means that we really don't have uh, an opposition party here in um, South Africa because the number one opposition party already talking about working with Cyril Ramaphosa and I suppose they're doing their own little estimations and I hope this is based on concrete stats and survey that the ANC will be under 50%. Now they want to work with it on... Uh, uh, as a coalition, I mean, instead of even say maybe putting a facade, you know, as DA leader and saying we're going to beat the the ANC and be the governing party, but you know what I mean. And then when the election comes through, and then they get whooped again by the ANC, and then that's when maybe uh, Stian Hazen would say we're willing to work with the ANC, uh, with the president Sir Ramaphosa at the helm, but nah. They're not doing that, or or they're already con, con, conceding, and uh, conceding and saying we're gonna be beaten up by the ANC, and then obviously we've got the EFF that is hovering around nine and ten percent. So one can just hope that there will be a huge coalition of political parties, four, or five, um, that will be having fifty one percent, um, in the next uh, national elections, and maybe after that. Uh, in the next five years after that, there'll be a political party that had an outright uh, majority. Anyway, that's just my take. My name is Mamuji, and thanks for watching the Mamuji Show, and I'm out.